hour two. What are you doing? This broadcast is all right. Is it appropriate for me? What are you doing, Kevin? Kevin? I couldn't get my audio to work. I told you to hold on a second. You didn't say yeah. that. We're on play spot. Yay. Me. Focus on me. It's all about me. Ah. Uh, if I was doing this any better, I'd be able to do this a lot faster, a lot smoother. Um, I'm at a horrible camera angle. I hate your, your look up your nose camera angle, by the way. Figured since this whole thing's a disaster, I might as well just share that too. Is that better? That's that's fucking horrible. That's horrifying. You're gonna scar children. Children don't watch this. Uh, I hope somebody does, and then like they're a deranged psycho killer, and they call this part of the species we don't need. Ugh. Truth and facts and stuff. Um, I'm going to adjust my camera back up now that we're finally there. Um, I'm, I, I'm going to do the equivalent of punching my other PC in the dick. Uh, and I'm going to stay up tonight and just reinstall, do a fresh install. Uh, I'm going to put Windows 10 on a thumb drive. And I'm just going to do a fresh install. I'm going to lose all my game data. And I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Um, I'm going to show you how damaged this PC is real quick. You see this shit? What happened? Oh, that's from the cats. Cats. And I'm going to put this back up here, and then it's not going to work because the cords are in the wrong spots, and it's the cord's going to pull the camera down at some point. Ugh. Ugh. What the fuck were we talking about, Kevin? We were talking about... Mobile, mobile gaming? Planet Breaker. Uh, no, I was going to come back to that because uh, it's going to segue nicely into the other thing. The game that I have been playing, uh, I've beaten this game before, but like the version that I beat um, didn't have so many levels. Uh, it's called Free Flow. Um, it looks uh, something that like that. Yeah, I played that one. Yeah, uh, there's a new one called Bridges as well. Um, all you do is you draw orange to orange, cyan to cyan. Uh, like yellow to yellow, and then you can't have them cross, otherwise that happens. So, like, yeah, so you just do that repeatedly, and it starts as low as how many? Five by five to nine by nine. I'm sorry. There are uh, 12 by 12 and 14 by 14 boards as well. Okay. But that's that's like a super good, like, oh, I got to take a poo game. <laughs> Because you, you play a couple and then you put it down. It should like be a separate category on the Play Store. Bathroom genre. <laughs> well, because people know, because but people will sit in there and play like Lords of Waterdeep and shit on their tablets. It's 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 your discretion what you want to play on the toilet. And of all the horrible things that could have happened, did this really? Is this really what happened? It's showing. The drive that I'm using to pull this overlay off as uh, as, as not working. Whoa. Which is concerning on multiple levels uh, because that's where a lot of my good stuff is, and that's the four terabyte drive that should be fine. That shouldn't be an issue. And if that's what's been faulty, even though the damn memory scans don't show anything. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of concerns. Um, and the only thing that could possibly, that could possibly be is that I don't know if I changed mini cam or not because fuck mini cam, but I, I changed OBS to store there, but I don't ever have any problems with just OBS on its own. It's always when I involve mini cam. And then I found out that mini cam was actually interfer being interfered with, with the, the NVIDIA drivers. So I disabled those. Um, and I have stuck on me, and you're, it's not going to you, and that's the wrong mouse. So <laughs> this is a horrible shit show. Um, I can't believe I, I invited somebody else on here. Because uh, <laughs> this is what they're going to be looking at, and they're going to be like, you do what? Uh, <laughs> so she's never coming on here. Who'd you invite on here, Danielle? Uh, Danielle. Isn't she one of the weirdlings? 
She, oh, you're talking about Davarona, yeah. Uh, that was actually another one. It was uh, Mary the Knitting Dev. Um, okay. I, I extended the invitation because I realized that like, maybe I hadn't uh, previously, but I wanted to make sure that it was a standing, she knew the standing invitation was there. Cool. So after this, I'm going to go grab a thumb drive and set, her, set it up. So free, free flow. The other thing was Power Breaker. And I want to show you how ridiculous this is. You'll probably recognize it. <laughs> Uh, you ever watch DBZ? We'll do this. Long time ago. So, here's that. And you can see the little meter on the right there. And that's all you do. It's essentially <laughs> trying to get the... See, and I failed. So, it's game over right there. Um, How far do you, does it, if it's below 50% or something, do you fail? It's like you have to m m go over 88%, I think. So you're essentially trying to go back to 1982 repeatedly. Um, <laughs> um, for those who didn't get that, that was a Back to the Future reference. Enjoy. Um, but it's 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 such a non-content game. It's the game is literally like a timing mechanic. Yeah, that's it. It just it's repeated um, where the the timing is varied. Um, I would say the hardness of the planets varied, but it's really not. It's just a matter of how close to 100% you hit. Because if you hit 100% every time, you'll always get through. Okay. So there's no skill involved other than that. So it's like the bare minimum of a game. Yeah. Are you a fan of that game? It was entertaining. Like, it was a good bathroom game. Like, but I beat the short version. Like, or I got the, the long version unlocked. And I'm looking at the long version. I'm just like, I can't. I don't think I can play this for that much. I really don't think that's that's a thing I can do. So, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> um, but that leads me to the other fuck you in mobile gaming, Fallout Shelter. Um, I swear, no, don't open it. God damn it. Uh, I don't know why I clicked on it at all. Uh, I swear to God, the only reason this game got popular. Is because it has Fallout in the title. Um, so all the idiots who like Fallout and Bethesda uh, jumped on it. And then uh, they sponsored Rooster Teeth. Um, when was it? For RTX. Um, and, so, and that's not a small amount of fans in the in the video game industry. That is a lot of fans. Um, so that's, that's a lot of power right there. And when you have pro... Uh, video game players telling you like, oh, this is awesome and this is what I'm doing and I'm buying lunch boxes left and right. It really uh, makes a statement. But it what they do. don't, I'm sorry, what the fans don't realize is that the 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 they're professional gamers. They're using your money to to fucking play those games and in, in a pay to win fashion. Or that was you your there? opening. Yeah. Oh, Can you hear me? Sorry. I couldn't for a second. You were frozen. Here we go. You're back. Okay. I, I did just stop talking for a minute um, to let you in because you tried a couple times. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so fall, I mean, it's, it's okay. So the, the success of the game aside, um, it's a babysitting simulator. Would you disagree? Yeah, I would agree. <clears throat> yeah, I, would agree. I mean, it, it I didn't personally enjoy it. Um, I've not been... I've never played really any of the other Fallouts, so I wasn't attached to the name. But I did want to give it a try. Uh, one thing that I found like really challenging about it was that it killed my battery on my phone just like in a matter of minutes. I could play for like 10 or 15 minutes. It would just drain my battery. And my phone would get really hot. So it's, I don't think it's a good game if you're just kind of... I don't know, like riding the bus or hanging out. It's not one of those games to just go to them if you need your phone later. Um, now, I agree with you because I do have a good phone. Um, mm -hmm. And <laughs> I, I would say that like, I had the same issues. Battery got hot. Um, it, it was a drain on the phone. And I, did, I just played it for about a week. I actually stopped, I think, on Friday. I was just like, I can't do this fucking thing anymore. Um, so like I would leave it running during the day and like I would do some stuff and then go back to it 
hit my marks or whatever and then figure out what I wanted to do next with things. Uh, and I started training people and it's like the fact that I have to sit here and manage this shit makes it worse than Animal Crossing. <laughs> At least that stupid thing would run on its own and then I could come in back and check in on it and they would be like, why don't you love me anymore? <laughs> but I yeah. come back... Ugh. Go ahead. I was going to say, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't get too far into the game before I kind of gave up on it. Um, my battery's not great anyway. Um, and like I said, I don't find myself playing too many mobile games as it is. So I did check it out for a couple of days. Um, got relatively far. But at, like I think one of the things that was missing from the tutorial was I didn't... Maybe I missed it, but I didn't see like a true objective. Like, it was just like, here's how you do this stuff. And it was left me wondering, like, but why am I doing this stuff? What's the point? What am I trying to get to? <laughs> Is the point to kill my battery? Because if so, I've got to be winning. The, the point was to manage your vault. Like, right. I don't know why we care so much about that. Like, at all. If we're being honest. Um, yeah, screw that vault. Google Hangouts is this weird thing. Where like your the size of your thing changes, it bothers me. I'm sorry. Um, so like it's a, a vault management system, great, whatever. Um, and it, it's not even in the true fashion of vaults because the vaults are there for experiments, and people are out there doing those. But I think there's the 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 super hardcore people that are probably getting paid to do it, um, that are buying lunch boxes to to make things happen and spending extraordinary amounts of time on it. So you're either you either have pro people or dependents playing. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that their vote shouldn't count. What I'm saying is that you have to take that into account. If you take someone with a full time job, um, you can't do this. Plus, the fucking shutdown behavior is obnoxious. Um, it stays on just long enough to cause you all sorts of problems after you <laughs> shut it down. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you go like if you met and it doesn't even have a clear exit. You have to, like, backtrack as far as you can to the main menu and then uh, use your phone to back out of it from there and kill the application. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have yeah, a natural I had to it too. Uh, It's fucking ridiculous. So, And then after you do that, because you're like, okay, I know I'm not going to be able to do anything more. Let me do this. It stays active for I don't know how long. So when you come back you would just have this list of problems to deal with. Uh, because nobody can do anything on their own. They can purify this water and, and cook all this food, but they can't move it from the fucking kitchen to the tables. <laughs> yeah. It's, okay. it's baffling that such a bad game can be so popular. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. and I, I use the game the word game very loosely loosely because it's the bare minimum of a game again it, it, it's the it's the simulation from XCOM that portion uh, I'm sorry the in the building issue or the building structure from XCOM mixed with Animal Crossing in like the worst ways possible um, it's just managing simulation aspects it's it's basically a clicker game which means mm -hmm. that it's not a game <laughs> I agree with that. I like I said, I I didn't find it very interesting. It does require a certain suspension of disbelief, like you're saying, like they can boil and purify the water, but they can't like move it to the next room or whatever. They and can't drink the shit. Well, no, they can drink it, but they can't get new stuff on their own. Yeah, it becomes pretty mundane pretty quickly too. Like I find my I found myself very quickly doing like the same thing over and over. Like, oh, we need more power. Oh, we need more water. We need more food. We don't have enough people to make enough food. Get more people. Send them to the food. All right, great. Yeah, the, the 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 small brilliance in the mechanics, because that's mostly what there is, is that uh, you can never be truly balanced. You yeah. can get everything running proficiently, but to get things running proficiently at top, you uh, you end up with excess people, and then you assign them to other things, and then that drains your power. So you yeah. you end up upgrading your power to compensate, uh, which requires that you get more people, which requires that you more food and water. Um, so there's this infinite up spiral. 
or downward spiral. <laughs> I would, uh, I would say downward. Yeah, yeah, and like I don't know, like, and the one aspect that really seems to like make it challenging for the people who would want that is the fact that your characters can die, but then you can just spend caps to resurrect them. Mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck is the point of that? There's no resurrection in that game. It's, there's no mythical prop properties of anything. There's no Phoenix Down. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't match the uh, like the theme of the Fallout games then. Yeah, it doesn't match the rest. Of the, it doesn't match the rest of the game, um, because the whole point is to to try to survive. And then if you can just pay to survive, then what the fuck is the point? Right. Um, the point is to get your money, because that's what it is. That's business ruins products. It's yeah. It's a fact, because uh, this is a game made to get your dollars. So they give it to you for free so that you're incentive to spend time with it. The more time you spend with it, the more invested you spend with it. The more invested you spend with it, the more valuable it is so that you can actually uh, justify spending a couple bucks on lunch boxes or just to buy caps. I can't remember. No, because you get caps from lunch boxes. Yeah. Um, so it's really a sick fucking industry um, that's really close in my opinion to getting regulated like gambling yeah um like it i i wouldn't be surprised if within the next five to ten years we actually had a law saying you cannot sell free games um that you can then after spend money you have like it has to be like a dollar cap at least yeah um to to have a pay-to-play game Sorry, like one of the cats jumped in the swivel chair that's next to me, um, and it kept spinning because of the way he hit it, and he didn't know what to do. So, <laughs> like, he wanted to like wash his tail, but the chair was kept moving. So, like, he tried to get up, and then it, it got back around to where he wanted the chair to be. So he'd lay back down. He'd start licking his tail, and then he'd twitch. Um, Spin again. Yeah, and now that it's stopped. Uh, he's just gone insane. Um, That's weird. <laughs> cats. Um, okay, so continuing on from mobile gaming, um, the bridge. Um, what do I have to say about the bridge? I did most of the game on a blind play, and I just liked it so much I kept going, and I think eventually I got tired. So I stopped playing, and then I went back to play. I think I had like three levels left. So that video series is really oddly scheduled. It's like an hour, then like five minutes, because I did one level and it crashed. Um, <laughs> and then like another 45 minutes on one level, which was the last level in the game. But it turns out there's a, there's a New Game Plus version of it where uh, everything's reversed. And then they add elements. Okay. Um, so, and then I spent like I think twenty minutes or or more on the uh, the first level in the mirrored world. And I'll be honest, like I could not get it. I actually had it one time, but I didn't I didn't follow through. And I went and looked it up to make sure what in the world I could possibly doing be doing wrong. And I saw that I came. I I basically had it. I just didn't follow through. Because okay. um, the way the bridge works is you rotate the map, uh, the level, the 2D platform level around, and you can't jump because he's an old man. You just you can walk back and forth and you can rotate it. But on this level, there's a little ball that will kill you if you if it hits you. So you've got to rotate the level in a certain way so that you can maneuver around the ball. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's it's. I would suggest uh, like go watch the our or my the gaming division playthrough of it or uh check it out you've got access to my library fuck uh, okay and i mean you can play like literally like the first five levels or whatever and you've basically got the gist of the game they add a mechanic in every section okay um and there's four five sections there's at least four sections um so it's it is a very interesting game um 
and it's a nice little puzzle platformer, which I really enjoy. Like, I enjoy puzzle platformers, but I don't enjoy, like, you must do these 97 steps exactly where you shall die and fail miserably and bring dishonor to your family. It's just like, no, I can't. It's too much. <laughs> that sounds sounds pretty intense. Yeah, that's and that's basically how I feel when I look at, like, Mega Man. Like, I watch... Like call him, I, I'll mention kind of funny games again. Colin Moriarty went through and played Mega Man one through six. He did it all in one sitting, by the way. Um, and like I just watch him play that, and I'm like, that's amazing because I know I'll never be that good at Mega Man. Um, <laughs> but he beats the first game in like 40 minutes. Um, oh, granted, wow. granted, it's a short game uh, because it only has six bosses, five bosses, something like that, where all the other ones have eight. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's not, I don't know. It's, it's, I could, I still couldn't do it. It's impressive in the very least. Um, I was going to say something in particular. Uh, Kevin, anything else you want to add as far as games, bigger games or anything? Um, I've been playing some Final Fantasy 12. I think we talked about this the other day, which is on, uh, PS2, so I know... Oh, yes. Update me on this, because it has Ivalence, right? Uh, yeah, I'm late to the party there. I haven't played much since I talked to you about it last, but I know I haven't talked about it on the show. Um, I've only got maybe like an hour, hour and a half playtime, because I just picked it up. I kind of I found it in my brother <laughs> my brother's stuff. I was like, hey, there's a new game that I'd like to try out. Uh, and so I just popped it in and gave it a go. It's really a lot of fun. It's the same world as... Um, Final Fantasy Tactics, which is Ivalice, I think is how they pronounce it. Um, okay, it's, which is the best Final Fantasy game, by the way. Yeah, according to you. <laughs> a lot of people agree, too. Uh, and I'm really enjoying it. It's also one of the first ones where they actually had voice acting. Um, it's I think it's the first one that got rid of the active time battle system, so it's like a little bit more open world battle, which takes some getting used to because there's still like a time component that you can see. So there's actually like a time bar that fills up. And like, if you have them attacking that your character will attack and then you have to wait on the time bar to fill up and then I'll attack again. You're talking about 12, right? Yeah. I need you to expand on what you mean when you're talking about the, the turn or how the turns work. So like uh, traditionally before that, I'm more familiar with like older final fantasy games. I haven't played any newer than 12, which is sad. Well, I played, I played a Realm Reborn. But anyway, um, traditionally the way it is, it's more turn-based. So you select, like, your action, and then the person does it, and then you have to wait for the time to fill up for, like, their turn again, and then you select the action again, and then they do that. So you're just constantly cycling through each player in your party, waiting on the time uh, the time bar to fill up before they can do the next action. And, and there's, like, a menu that comes up every time. Versus in Final Fantasy XII, there is no menu unless you opt to bring it up, so it'll automatically keep attacking. Um, oh, okay. I should back up. Also, in like the older Final Fantasies, um, you have random battles, and if you fight something, then it like you're in the open world, and then it stops, and then you go to a fight screen. So you don't see the the monsters generally, um, or the opponents, I guess, like roaming the open world. So you just kind of walk around, and then randomly you are transported to this magical battle land where you have to fight people. It just zooms in, Kevin. And I, I would like to correct a couple things. The original like NES uh, games up to like five, uh, I want to say are t- are turn true turn based. Right. Uh, there is a strict initiative order. Um, in six. Uh, they switch to a time-based turn system, which is what you're referring to uh, for like six and seven. Now mm-hmm. I could be wrong, and maybe four, five, uh, four forward or is like that. Um, they did start experimenting with things like if you, not Crystal Chronicles, but um, Legend of the Mist or something like that. Uh, there's an adventure RPG or an action RPG um, similar to Secret of Mana. Uh, in a Final Fan- but it, with a Final Fantasy skin to it. Um, and Chrono Trigger, they uh, they both, all three of those games, you can see the, you're, you're never in the open world, you're always zoomed into battle level. Okay. And I've always really liked that. Um, but uh, in Secret of Mana, you attacked in real time, that was not turn-based. In Chrono Trigger, 
if you got noticed by the enemy and you were within proximity, you would go to a, uh, a time-based uh, battle. And okay. then the uh, Legend of the Mist or whatever, that was also like Legend of Zelda style, real-time striking. Okay. Sorry, so please continue. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I've really gotten through the beginning. Uh, it starts off with a prologue. Uh, it's been a while since I picked it up. I can't remember everything that happened, but I think the uh, the, the prince is killed. Basically, it's the uh, Dalmasca. Um, the kingdom of Dalmasca is attacking, or is under attack. I I took poor notes on this because I didn't. I forgot that I would be talking about it. Um, we were going to talk about it last week, but um, it starts off with a prologue where you're actually watching a really long movie sequence that's kind of starting the story. So I feel like, for me at least, compared to some of the other versions of Final Fantasy, partially because it's narrated and has voice acting, and partially because it has like more dedicated FMV sequences, is that actually I felt like I was more involved with the story. So, so far, that's been really cool. I feel like I'm actually a part of the story um, from the start, rather than kind of playing the game to learn what the story was like in like i'm more familiar with like seven eight and nine where a lot of times i kind of dive right in and they're like hey what's going on let's learn what's happening to all these characters whereas here it's like hey here's all the things that's happening before you even really start even playing and that's been i think that's been really interesting x i like exposition like i'm not a front load player unless it uh for information unless it's about story. Mm -hmm. because then you give me a bunch of context for what's actually going on. If you try to give me like uh, mechanical instructions front loaded, it doesn't work. I need, I need to be able to make it meaningful, but I actually know all the story mechanics ahead of time. So if you tell me a story, I can remember it just okay. fine. Um, so as much as I, I'd like to pick and prod at like what's going on in, in Ivalance, um how do you feel compared to like older games about uh, text versus speech, um, like as far, whether it's one by itself or the two of them combined, where's your preference lay? I really enjoy having the speech. Um, speech and the text is great because sometimes I don't hear what they're saying. Um, I, I really prefer it when I get the option to like choose when it goes forward, especially if there's text and speech, because sometimes like the speech will go too fast or if the text is like auto scrolling, it'll go too fast. I'm like, I didn't see that. So my favorite format is when somebody's talking and then like there's subtitles and then you like, you have to confirm to go to whatever they say next, like their next line. So I still enjoy text box. Um, okay. Like a lot of these like uh, visual novels, will do that, even if they have voice acting. And, like, sometimes they're real spotty. It's like some parts have voice acting, some parts don't, or they'll just make a noise. <laughs> eh! <laughs> um, and then there's a big block of text at the bottom. Um, I, I, I'm fine reading, like, when it comes to that. Uh, because you've already got my attention. I'm, I'm sitting here playing a game, or uh, I'm using visual software. I need to adjust that. Because visual novels aren't games to me. They're They're... Even if they branch, they, they come to linear conclusions. There's no there's no gameplay involved. It's which storyline would you like to choose? It's a choose your own adventure book, yeah. Uh, where you just pick the direction that you go, and that's fine. It's completely enjoyable. I more power to you if you enjoy it, but they're not games. Yeah, I would agree with that. But um, that's where I'm with Final Fantasy XII. Um, hoping to block out a little bit of time this week uh, before I get too busy to maybe play some, that, some of that for a few more hours and hopefully I have more to talk about next week with the actual story. Um, yeah, I really would like to hear about what's going on with that. Um, I love, I just love Final Fantasy Tag so much, so anything else that's happening in that world, I would be very glad to hear about what happens with it. Um, but it's not going to be the same characters, so like, I don't know why I care. If I'm being honest, because if I remember right, like it's a hundred, like uh, the story that I played through is a hundred years before the story that you played through and you haven't even played tactics, right? No, I have not. So how do you feel about playing it out of order? It doesn't bother me too much. Um, I tried playing some tactics, but 
haven't gotten into it too much. Uh, you had me play for a little bit, and part of that was, honestly, it was kind of hard on my eyes because I was playing, like, a PlayStation 1 game with the text, like, on the big screen. So it was, like, really hard for me to read the text because it's so text-heavy. I think that'd be easily remedied with, like, just putting it on, like, maybe a smaller TV or something like that just so it'd be a little easier to read. There are some settings, and I realize that your TV had fucked up settings. Yeah, uh, we haven't ever talked about this um, because I finally figured out why Game of Thrones looks so weird. Um, was that? You think that True Motion is HD settings and it's not. True, true <laughs> that's, that's what it was. You guys had True Motion turn on, and that's the thing that makes it look super contrasted, so that it looks like a fake movie set. Okay. Um, if you turn that off, you'll actually have True HD. Uh, there's nothing wrong if you like having True Motion on, but that was the the, the problem that I, I never knew because I didn't know it was a thing at the time. Okay. Um, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be surprised if that would if that was actually uh, causing blur with your your video games um, because it's, it's not. not it is on that. Netflix, so I'll I'll check that out actually because like uh, on Netflix, like it's weird when the credits roll, like the opening credits, if there's something where. It, the camera's moving a lot, then it will blur the the actual credits, which is weird. But if it's it's, it's because not, it can't keep up with the 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 super strict contrast. Right. Mm, okay. So um, I'm looking at that. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, when you're testing things, let it buffer up and try it, or let it fail. Like find an instance where it's failing, then stop, let it buffer, and roll back a little bit. And, and then let it play to see if it fixes itself. Okay. It's weird because, like, the video is playing fine, so generally I can see what's on the screen just fine. It's just, like, the writing overlay that gets blurred. Or, like, yeah, because... It kind of, it kind of flickers. Uh, you have the perspective that it's foreground versus background. Like, I mean, that's, that's a layering thing in editing, but it's because it's a... It's a it's a strict digital image against an analog background. Um, okay. And it's trying to force that contrast. And because it's trying to do that so quickly um, as the data comes in, it's just not keeping up. Uh, that makes sense. So if you were running it on a higher PC, um, then maybe I, I, it may, I realize you may not be running it off a PC, but it, whatever you're using to, to stream it, if it was a little faster, it may not do that. Okay. Um, okay, so Oh, I I did forget. Uh Sakura Fantasy Chapter 1. I did do a playthrough of that. That's a visual novel thing. Uh the Sakura series is kind of like shunned. I think it was banned from Twitch for a while. Um Sakura Fantasy maybe. No, uh Sakura I don't know. One of them, though the first one I think was banned uh, because it's a sexy fan service game. Okay. Um, but I listen to Dodger Lee occasionally, so I played it. I played the first one. I played through the first one, and um, it was actually a decent story. So I was like, I want to see what else these guys do. So uh, the next couple I found. I got in like when they were on sale and it was Scare Fantasy Chapter 1 and oh, what's the other one? Um, Scare Angels which I haven't tried yet. Um, but they're not as good as I wanted them to be. They're interesting. Um, but like I hate that I have a Chapter 1 and I don't have the rest of the things because they're not done yet. <laughs> um, so it's like it's the worst of episodic gaming because it's just a visual novel. Finish the fucking thing and give give me all of it. Um, or at least finish the story arc because we're like halfway through like a sub story arc right now. <laughs> um, and it's like, no, no, no I want to see what happens after uh, they leave this village. Um, so, but it's theoretically it's going to take them five fucking story arcs or five fucking episodes to get to the thing and resolve <laughs> the overall thing. So I'll just wait on the other four, and when they're on sale, I'll grab them. Uh, <laughs> I can recommend uh, Katawa Shoujo. 
That was yeah, that was a really good one. That one before. And that's that is a dating sim that can go X rated, uh, along with Honey Pop, which actually has some game mechanics built into it. Um, okay. And as much as it's like let's try to bang these babe babes type games, they're actually pretty interesting. Um, if you ignore that aspect, um, because the people like who make games like that from Japan are really good at it just because they want to put like a, a theme that we're not comfortable with here in America on it. Um, like, does not mean that the game's not going to have good quality? Um, right. I don't know if I've ever talked to you about this game. Uh, I can't, uh, I can't in good conscience recommend anyone ever play it. Uh, it's called Sengoku Rants. Okay. Uh, but I think it's got a fan, it's got fantastic a fantastic game hidden inside it. But the the short version of the story is that um, this province in uh, the equivalent of Japan is having um, issues with neighboring nations and, and the whole regions at war. Um, so they hire this foreigner you uh, rants to come in and his reward for unifying uh japan i'm just called japan through war is that he gets to um fuck all the princesses (laughs) so the idea is that and he quickly goes away from this but the idea is that he's going to rape his way across the country the region whatever um but he quickly, I don't know why, but he quickly uh, gets away from raping and he, he, he starts not having sex with people that don't want to. Be, I, maybe it's because there's so many. Um, or like it's through violence. Because there's several situations where like, I just took over your country. Put all the women in that room and I'll be right there. Um, so I think there's several situations where women in that that situation wouldn't feel safe refusing and that's in reality that's the same thing but uh for a video game with a ridiculous story um because it is it's it's completely ridiculous um no kitty don't move that camera um it's completely ridiculous but like the if you ignore that part of it and you actually play the game the game's actually pretty fascinating it reminds me a lot of uh, uh, is it Ogre Tactics for, for the SNES? Um, okay. Mixed with um, fuck, there's a there's a whole genre built off this one game. I can never remember the game's name, but it's, it's essentially like you have it's like Risk, where you you own a territory and you're trying to spread okay to other territories. Um, it's it's really it's really interesting. Um, and it's hard enough that like I can't do well in there without a, a cheat engine. Oh, wow. uh, and it was actually worth using the cheat engine to look at some of the different stories that are hidden in there because fucking aside, um, the stories are actually interesting on how the the different nations relate to each other and based on whether you conquer them or subjugate them, um, how they react. Um Sorry, I can see Wee Black behind me being a devil <laughs> with the mouse. Um, but if you have no other games to talk about, I would like to talk about Until Dawn for a moment. Sure. And then we can we can end up. Um, yeah, that's everything I've been playing. So. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but most of the uh, oh oh that's lovely. I touched the power cord. There we go. And it decided to unplug itself. Um, most of the visual novels that I've seen have been indie indie style. They've been low budget games. Would you agree? Yeah, mostly. Haven't you ever wondered what would happen if uh, a uh, a visual novel got triple A status? Yeah, that'd be cool. Well, I would think that like you would immediately point to fables. Um, like Walking Dead. Yeah. What it was? What is that company? They do a really good job with it. Oh. Um, Not Double Fine. No, it's the same people that do. They did the Game of Thrones. 
Yeah, they're doing Game of Thrones. They're doing the Minecraft like one. Borderlands. Uh, there is a Borderlands one. I think that they are in process of making. Um, Tales of the Borderland, I think, is what they're th- that one's called. Um, I'm really curious now because uh, they're famous for Telltale doing visual novel. Telltale Games. There you go. Um, that's all they do, and they do it really well. Uh, they do it successfully well for business. Let me say that. Yeah. Uh, because I hate the Walking Dead one. Um, it's got a great story. It's just got it's locked behind bullshit quick time events that just don't need to be there. Um, they're as bad as the ones from Halo Four. <laughs> um, it's like no, just have him kick the zombie and let me continue on with this story. I don't, I don't want to pretend to play a game. <laughs> um, uh, so what was I gonna say? Um, so until dawn has a lot of quick time events in it, but I would actually say they're well placed because they're meaningful. They're like, okay, so we want to do this, and if you fail on any one of these points, it has consequences. It's going to take you down a different storyline eventually. Um, now I don't own the game; it's only available for PS4, um, or I don't own the software. Because let's face it. Um, so I can't prove this, but it's the first how I say this, it's the first visual novel where you can hit uh, uh, you can hit something with all the possible um, end conditions or none of them. Interesting. So there's a, a storyline ending where everyone's alive, or and there's a storyline ending where no one lives. <laughs> Because it's a survival horror uh, visual novel. And it's done really well. It's done with like movie quality uh, models. Like Hayden Panettiere, uh, Agent Ward from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Can't remember his real name. Um, the guy from Mr. Robot. Um, like everyone looks really good except for like maybe the teeth. Oh, uh, the, there's a guy... I can never remember his name. He was the guy who got eaten by the copies in Jurassic Park Lost World. I don't remember. Okay, he's he's very foreign. He, it's not, not like this accent, but like he talks very slowly and yes. Uh, and he's lots of teeth. You know who I'm talking about? I think so, yeah. yeah. I don't know his yeah. name. He's that guy. Yeah, it's not someone you're going to remember his name, but you r- always recognize him when you see him because he's distinctive and he's a good actor. Let's get that straight. Um, <laughs> and so, like, there's a lot of that going on. Um, but it's a be- so it's beautiful, I guess. 100, 100 plus on the on the aesthetics. Um, the, the mechanics are genius just for the storyline telling. Um, it's got what, I don't know why it's like they've never used tank controls before, but a lot of these guys are calling it tank controls similar to the original resident evil. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where you like you, it walks you around and then you can rotate with the other one in third yeah. person. Um, which doesn't make any sense to me because you can move around and rotate at the same time. As far as I'm aware. Uh, tank controls to me is where you like left trigger to turn left and right trigger to turn right and both yeah. forward. That's how I would, I would view it too. Yeah. So I, it's people say stupid shit all the time. So it's whatever they're used to. Um, but I watched, I watched let's play do it, which is the achievement hunter guys uh, or rooster teeth. And then I watched uh, scary aim squad squad, which is, uh, the co-optional group. It's Jesse Cox, um, Gerard the Completionist, Alex, and, and, and another guy, Davis, I think. Uh, I don't remember where they're from, um, to, if I'm being honest. But they're, uh, they they did a really good playthrough, and they call a lot of the story as it was going. Because um, I'm not going to spoil it because it's, it's that good. But the, there's rewatchability there. Uh, oh. So even if you're not playing it, even if you're just watching it, it's a good time. Um, and you're not necessarily going to get the same gameplay experience each time. Um, and being that you have 
eight people that could survive or all survive or die. Um, you th should theoretically have that many like combinatorics of uh, it possible endings. Yeah. Um, I think really the truth of it is, is that um, when you get to the end, you have eight different endings with a couple permutations branched off of that, that you yeah. don't wear out play based on whether or not they're alive. Okay. Uh, Cause basically what they do is they're like interviewing them at the end of it. Like uh, there's a one point where one girl's like, he had a gun. He pointed it right at my face, like right here. Uh, <laughs> and if you, if she dies before then, I think she can, uh, then obviously that's not going to happen. Um, or if you shoot her, because that's an option, <laughs> then she's not going to be there at the end to, to say that nonsense. Um, so it's very interesting how they approached it. Because um, my idea for the one project where we started discussing doing it, because we were going to talk about doing like a, I'm going to say Zelda clone. I don't mean like, let's make Zelda. It just means like third person adventure. Mm -hmm. I, we were going to do one where like you could make decisions in the game that would actually change the world. Like, okay. Basically. Like if you uh, talk to this one person over here, like that would be the thing that made this island exist in this lake or whatever. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, things like that. Um, uh, and we just didn't get very far in the conversations as far as that design goes. Um. Okay, but yeah, Until Dawn's pretty awesome. Um, if you like Hayden, the idea of Hayden Panettiere in a towel, uh, go check it out. Because <laughs> uh, she has the most amazing towel ever. They should sell those towels. Um, I think they'd make a lot of money. <laughs> the thing just does not fall off. All right. So, towel. Okay, Kevin, I have to beat the shit out of Windows 10 now. Um <laughs> So that's going to be a thing I'm doing for a while, I think. Uh, but uh, thanks for coming on, buddy. Thanks for having me. Um, we'll, we'll work out when and how long this is going to go on. Uh, I'm afraid to do anything but Google Hangouts now for until I can prove it. The problem is, is that I can't seem to recreate uh, consistent crashes. I will have an error, I will fix a thing, and then I can't recreate it, and then the following week I will have another error. So. Oh. I, I, I don't know what to do about it. But we'll get there. Yeah. Google Hangouts works pretty well for now. So I, I hate it, if we're being honest. It's a, it's a good, easy way to get into it, but I know enough to know that I should be able to do better and that I was consistently doing better. Um, uh, so I could try to roll back to Windows 7, but I think if I do a clean install on Windows 10... I'll be okay. I just got to make sure I grab the CD key or whatever. Ooh. <laughs> All right. So until next time, let me, oh, I should probably have set that up while I was talking before. Where's my end card? Which one is this? Till next time, I am Camera. That's Weed Black. I'm this Kevin. Is Kevin. Have a nice day. Good night, Internet. You want to see what else we're doing? Go ahead and click the annotations, and it'll take you to our other channels. Thanks for watching.